Yogi. What? You gotta come out. Why? You gotta finish the, the video, bank two. Oh, I don't want to, it's hard. You have to do it, who else is gonna do it? I don't know, but it, it, Jake says it's really hard and I need to be ready and I don't think I'm ready. What do you need to be ready? I don't know, something. Usually when things are hard, that means you are ready. <laughs> double entendres aren't gonna work on me. Come on, you can do it. It's very serious. I know, and, and I'm being silly, and I'm sorry. I'll help you, come on, let's go. Mm. Come on. Fine, let's go. Stupid cat. <laughs> okay guys, as you saw in the intro, this is serious business, and guess what? There's no takesies, there's no secondsies. I'm raw dogging it today. I am doing this at the same time. I can't back out what I'm doing, so you're gonna see me mess up, and I may actually play it in the video. I may actually cut it out, make me look good. But we're gonna get started. We got a few things that we gotta do before we're ready to stick the pistons in, one of which is getting the uh, crank pulley on the engine and talk about top dead center and a couple of other settings that we're gonna be using in this video. You know that I forgot to put a size comparison here so you guys can see what an original 3.6 looks like in comparison to, it's like a 3.99, but basically it's a four liter displacement now. And when I stack them, cause I know you wanna see them stacked. There it is a noticeable difference in the diameter here. I'm wondering if anything else is different. I mean, but you know, I'm not much of an engineer, so I don't really know how to explain the advantages of one over the other, other than more displacement is better than less displacement. But at the same time, this is a really light piston. Uh, it doesn't have the rings, but it's still, the rings don't add a lot of weight. I'm gonna get my scale. All right, just got a regular old kitchen scale here. Not trying to get too scientific. This is with the rings. And what I can do, that's 417 grams. Let's just see what this one is. 426. Interesting. I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? I mean, 416. And then this one is 426, so 10 grams more in weight. By the way, I don't have the connecting rods. Uh, the I have the original ones, but I do not have the K1 connecting rods to measure, so I apologize. All right, so here we go. This is the steel ring. This is the second compression ring. Dang, that's almost, uh, what is that? It was 426? Yeah, so 10 grams. And no, I'm not gonna put these rings on because the other rings are wrong. I suppose I could put those two on. 445, here's the expander. See, look at that, two grams for that. And then the two scraper rings, 453-ish, 452-ish. All right, so 453, and that one together was again 416, I believe. Yep, 416 grams. So not that bad of a difference considering that you're going to a four liter. Yeah, the wrist pin area is a little wider here. Not sure what that's all about. Again, you engineers watching this, let me know your thoughts. But uh, hey guys, I'll be selling these 3.6 liter pistons somewhere. I'm thinking about standing up a, a website and recycle a lot of the parts that I won't be using or I bought too many of instead of returning them or it's been too long and I can't return them. I'll be sticking those on a site and selling them at a good price. So be on the lookout for that. Oh, I've been getting a lot of uh, questions about the rails, the guide, the timing chain guide rails on whether or not replacing them is really necessary. Well, I mean, I think it all depends on how old your car is. Uh, but say it with me, man, while you're in there, right? You want to um, replace as much as you can, but... If this makes you feel any better, if you bought new ones, check out the ones that I pulled out of my 911. And again, my 911 before I tore her apart. 
has 102,000 miles on it. All right, so this is for the IMS chain. Yeah, look at that, see? I mean, that is, come on, focus. There you go, look at that. Looks like something on the moon. Wow, okay. And then here's the other part, the IMS chain. See, look at that. Yeah, I mean, just total wear there. And then here's one from, this is uh, the bank two side, no, excuse me, bank one. Uh, not too bad. What I did notice though, and I think I showed this in a previous video, is there's a lot of play here, but the new ones themselves also do that. So I don't know, perhaps this one could have stayed in a little longer, but again, at this point, you're like, why? Although this one here is over a hundred dollars at FCP Euro. But again, if you guys shop at FCP Euro, you know, this will be the last time I have to buy new rails. If and when I own this car 100,000 miles from now, and if and when it it needs new rails, I can turn these into FCP and say, hey, I need some new ones. And they'll just give you them from what I understand, I hope. All right, this one too. This one's on uh, bank two. Some good wear here. And uh, here are the new ones that I have not put in on bank two yet. So you can see the difference. Very nice, brand new. And this one too. I believe, uh, I need to find the other one that looks like this, but I believe this one here is like a, a coffee brown after all the oil soaks into it. But again, so what I paid was probably three to $400 for a new rail set. Not cheap, but we are talking about your timing in your Porsche, so think about it. Okay, I was able to find the old rails that were, you know, opaque like this at some point. Uh, this is what they look like now. But the important thing to look at is this right here, the pitting. And a large chunk came out, and I do believe that that, and I say large, it's not that large, but I do believe that that little piece ended up in the sump. So keep that in mind. So this is a no-brainer here, right? You need to replace that one. And then this is the other one. Looks fine to me. Really. You be the judge. Okay, I've got Yogi Mama on the camera here to help me out. She's gonna bring us in close so I can show you some of the things that we're gonna need for this part of the project. All right, so here's your pulley. And yes, I did use my awesome ultrasonic cleaner on that. And if you haven't seen that, be sure to click that pop-up above and you can check out that little clip where I used the ultrasonic cleaner on some bolts and it looked amazing. And I also have an affiliate link in my description below. And if you can find the ultrasonic cleaner at Amazon and use that link, you're helping the channel out. So I really appreciate that. We've got a crank pulley here and there's a couple of things that I wrote on there. One of the things is this oval circle is your on top or top dead center. We know what that is, right? The other ones that are more important for this part of the project are U6, U5, and U4. U6, the number six obviously is cylinder or piston six, and U is for under. So this puts the piston at the lowest position or at the most optimal position of where we're gonna be able to ram this wrist pin into this piston from the inside. That's right. There's no backsies, there's no taking backs. This has got to fit in here with a plastic metal, like it's not even going in right now. That's something else I'm going to be talking to you about in a second. Um, so no messing up, right? Now I'm, now I'm starting to psych myself out. Don't do, that. <laughs> Don't do that. All right, I'm cool, I'm cool. All right, be cool, man, be cool. All right. So we got, I've already got the rings on the piston. You saw how I did that in the previous video. Uh, not a big deal. But the first thing we gotta do is we gotta get this thing on the engine, hand tight, and then we're gonna use this. We're gonna lock in U6 so that we can get ready to drop this piston.
take a look at the connecting rods in relation to the one that we're going to be focusing on right now. This is number six. And you can see that this one's almost all the way, I mean, it is all the way down, but it's also in a perfect position because I don't know if you can see this, but keep it over there. Check this out. Hello, I can see you. That's how we do the, the work. That's how we're going to get it in there. So I'll show you that on this side. All right, that, this here is the opening that we use to jam the wrist pin and the wire lock into the um, connecting rod. And in this case, it's CR6. Six. You can see I've got it all ready to go. I'm going to re-index it here to make sure that everything is where it should be. Uh, 2CR for me is the second compression ring. The top compression ring is here. The oil expansion ring, I couldn't see the blue paint, so I made my own little mark. But basically what you're looking for is to make sure that the ring is not overlapped and I can actually see it butted together right there. There, can you see that? Yeah, you can yeah. see that. All right, so that's good. Everything looks good. Now, I wanna make sure that my bottom oil ring is in the index, and it is. And then the top oil ring, oh, there it is, duh. Top, top O-ring, oil ring, it's all part of this. It's like a sandwich. And then the bottom one is where it needs to be. It's By the way, in case you didn't notice, this is how serious it is. I actually got dressed up for the occasion. Now, I draw the line on flip-flops, so, but I actually put on jeans. And it's probably the first time I've worn jeans in, I don't know, a month. So, I'm holding up my end of the bargain. That's something exactly where it should be. That's about as straight as you can get it, right? That's the front. Let me get my hammer. Hammer time. You just go until you can't go any further, and then you go the other way until you can't go any further. Slowly walking it in, exactly. Well, I feel like an oil ring. You don't want to force the matter here, right? Damage the oil ring? Yeah, I feel like an oil ring came loose. Let's see. Yeah, it's not, coming, it's not going anywhere. You can see it right here. See that oil ring? It popped out from underneath this. I want to clean the bottom of that, but no big deal. See, look, I can just beg and hope and pray that it comes out. Mm, there it comes. <laughs> Uh, it wasn't fully seated, and there's too much lube on the lip there. <laughs> Don't say anything, Yungi Mama. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, that is indeed what you said. Okay. You can do that again, however, you need to clean it up. somewhere buddy <laughs> don't don't leave without me buddy <laughs> so we're flipping this thing over because we love gravity at this point and those connecting rods if you had it vertical they'd want to do that and some of you guys out there know exactly what I'm talking about that's a double entendre and Yogi Mama's laughing um, but when you're upside down now they just hang straight down <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> just, 
We have a lot of fun here at Yogi's Garage. And yes, this is family fun, right? So anyway, so I'm gonna finish flipping this thing over and then I'm gonna get my borescope out and we're gonna take a peek. And, <laughs> and we're gonna take a peek. We're gonna take a peek at what it looks like from inside the belly of the beast. Okay, what you see here is my uh, boroscope, and it's a really nice model. It's made by Teslong, and it's the NTS 500. And it, what's cool about this is that it also has a 90 degree camera as well. And not only, ooh, hi. <laughs> not <laughs> only that, um, it has a LED light as well. So really cool. We're gonna be using the direct uh, angle here and we're gonna go right into this hole so that we can see the connecting rod in its natural environment. Here we are, into the belly of the beast. And it should be this way. There. Right? Nope. Like that. And what you see there is just the connecting rod. No piston. And if you look there in the lower left-hand corner, you can see the piston. All right, so I'm gonna reach under and push that piston until they line up. And then I have a special tool out of that toolbox that I demonstrated a couple of videos ago. It has the camshaft locking tools as well as the, uh, the, as well as the wire lock tool. Anyway, I'll put a pop-up on the screen. All right, it looks good from far away, but when you get closer, you can see that it's still a little offset. Now it's time to use this tool right here. This came in the uh, same pack I talked about. This thing is designed to align the piston with the connecting rod. Now, I've never done this before. I am pretty sure I should lube it up, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I need to feel it entering the piston until it bottoms out. I think that's it. All right, it looks good from far away, but when you get closer, you can see that it's still a little offset. I can see the connecting rod to the left there. So it's not quite where it needs to be. So I'm gonna keep trying. It'll do, looks good. All right, without touching anything, let's do the next step. This is where things get real, folks. Not that it hasn't been real already. All right, we're just gonna get the wrist pin lubed up. That feels bottomed out. Let's take a gander. All right, perfect insertion it looks like. Past the landing. Now I'm gonna switch to my other camera and see what it looks like from the other angle. There's the notch, there's the landing, there's the piston ring where the lock, where the wire lock's supposed to go, and then there's the wrist pin. We're in. That was not fun, but if you think that's hard, now we gotta put the wire lock on. I've got my pin loaded up, ready to go. Here we go. You gotta have confidence here. Oh, by the way, let me show you this. Um, you see this white ring here? This sleeve comes off. So what I did is I just wrapped one layer of Teflon on there, because otherwise this thing will get hung up in the bore and you'll pull this out, but this won't come along with it. So keep that in mind. All right, so here we go. And then you...
please work. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, the wire's gone. Here comes the big test. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I'm nervous. Because I don't know about you, man. I do not want to take an engine apart. All right, let's switch to the other one. Looks good this way. We need to verify. Looks good. I'm going to pull it out and clean the lens and check, check it one more time. Yeah, I got a little oil on the lens here. There we go. Whew. And I only have to do this two more times. Whew. Not today. There's one connecting rod, but that's not the one we're looking for. It's this one. There's the landing. There's the ring. That looks awesome. As a good friend of mine, Rick Sanchez, would say, son of a bitch, I'm in. All right. New crush washer. I think it's safe to remove these. Clunk. No, I'm just kidding. Whew, that was really stressful. Uh, yeah, so I have taken care of cylinder six, which is, from what I understand, by far the hardest uh, piston to take care of and they get progressively easier. However, I'm not gonna let my guard down and I'm just gonna keep chugging away. I'm not gonna show you the rest of it because uh, there was a lot of gaps between what I was doing and you probably saw quite a few hard cuts there because I had to take a step back, take a breather, figure it out, and get comfortable with how things are supposed to feel, right? Uh, how the tube, how the, the alignment dowel fits into the hole, how the, 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 the wire lock tool fits in there. And, and that takes a little practice. So as I, as I progress through, I'm gonna get more and more comfortable with it. And then by piston number four, I, I should be extremely confident in what I'm doing, I think. Hello, and welcome to another reading of Dad Jokes with Yogi. Shall we begin? What do you call two monkeys who share the same Amazon account? Primates. That's pretty good. Did you hear about the gardener who was so excited for spring? Yep, they wet their plants. Hmm. What did one knife say to the other? Hey, looking sharp. What do you call a laughing jar of mayonnaise? LMAO. Hmm. This has been another reading of Dad Jokes with Yogi.
All right. Thank you, Yogi Mama. Okay, I think I'm gonna end it right here. Obviously, I got it off of the stand because we've got to work on the IMS. This particular yoke blocks a little bit of the access to put the oil feed passage. So I'm just gonna take it off the stand here. We'll do the IMS in the next video and then we'll finish up the front end and get the oil pump worked in as well. But I think this is a good place to stop. We've got the dreaded bank two pistons in. As you saw, piston number six was a bear. I mean, I could say it was a bitch because it really was a bitch, but I don't know if you two will ding me for that. But anyway, um, four and, or sorry, and then pistons five and six had their own challenges. By the time I hit piston six, the top part of the wire lock insertion tool came apart after I used that Teflon. So again, don't try to recreate the wheel. Jake said to use super glue, which I must have missed after watching his videos like five or six times. So uh, with that said, if you're new to my channel, thank you for watching. Hopefully you found something interesting in this. We have a lot of fun here in Yogi's Garage. I got some Gen Z's in here and fixed their, their turbo and now we're back on the Porsche and I've got more projects coming up. So consider subscribing, hit that thumbs up, and we'll see you next time on Yogi's Garage. Yo, yo, microphone check, make it a microphone check. Give it a microphone, I make the make it a microphone dead. Don't step to me, newbie, I could truly be moody. I could have played the fucking Grinch in the movies. I've been a part-time shadow cat, part-time. That is not a guy that I would ever want to try to battle rap. Snap, crackle, pop, my